Hey, Girl Scouts, welcome back. I'm Christina Lachaga, your host, and I'm so, so excited you are tuning into It's Cookie Time Somewhere, because it's cookie time somewhere. <laughs> I'm so excited to be joined by my next guest. Oh my gosh, so, so excited. We are here with Michaela Ulmer. This is so, so exciting. Hi, thank Hi, you everyone. so much for joining me. Well, okay. I'm excited to be here. This is so, so much fun. I love your background. You are, honestly, your goals with your, <laughs> with your setup. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Of course. So I'm going to give a little introduction for all the Girl Scouts that are tuning in so they know a little bit about you, and then we'll get into our chat. Sounds good? Okay. 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 So Michaela Ulmer is the founder and CEO of Me and the Bees Lemonade. We're going to try this later. She's an entrepreneur, a bee ambassador, a philanthropist, and an author. And I'm so excited. She launched her business back in Austin, Texas in 2009. And she landed a deal with Damon John on the show Shark Tank. Oh my gosh, big fan. <laughs> um, you can purchase her lemonade. I purchased it yesterday. We're going to tell, she's going to tell us where you can get it later. And um, Mikhail's book, Be Fearless, Dream Like a Kid, was released on August 18th, 2020. I'm so excited. Thank you, Michaela, for joining us. Thank you, and hello, Girl Scouts Global. So excited to talk with you guys today. I am so excited. Okay, so, Michaela, tell us a little bit about yourself, and I want to know, so I heard that you started your lemonade business when you were just four years old. Yes. What is the story? Okay, so, hi, my name is Michaela. I'm 16 years old. I'm a junior in high school. Uh, I, in my free time, I like going outside and gardening. I love playing VR with my friends and my younger brother, and I enjoy reading. I also have a pet dog and pet chickens, so I like oh my gosh. to their I eggs. Have chickens. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, but my story did start when I was four and a half years old in Austin, Texas. I had a toy. I don't, it was like a baby alive or something, and I, my cousin had it, but my parents didn't want to get it for me, so they said, you can either do some chores and earn some money to get it, or you can find a way to earn money another way. And of course, I'm like, I have already done too many chores. I want to find a way to do, to get money some other way. And so over the summer, I was trying to figure out what products I can sell to earn money. And I got a 1940s cookbook for my great granny Helen um, that had her favorite recipe of flaxseed lemonade in it. So that was one. And then the second thing was I got sung by two bees in one week. And that was terrifying. I was afraid of the bees and I wanted nothing to do with them. And so my parents encouraged me to do some research. I learned about how incredibly important pollinators the bees are. And that without the bees, we can't have a lot of the foods that we eat every single day. And so I decided well, I'm learning that the bees are dying and that they're very important. And I also have an amazing flaxseed lemonade recipe. What if I combined the two and made honey sweetened flaxseed lemonade? So it was a way to turn a regular lemonade into a more unique product, help save the bees, and earn some money for my toy. Oh my gosh, you are so, so inspiring. So we have girls tuning in from all over the all over the globe. They're ranging in age from about five to eighteen. And honestly, to know that you started your business when you're just four years old and how far you've come by sixteen, it's incredible. So, oh my gosh, everyone, mm. make sure that you tune in and make sure you listen to everything Michaela has to say. <laughs> this is so exciting. Okay, so you appeared on Shark Tank when you were just ten. Yes, and you convinced Damon John to invest in your company. So. What was that experience like? And what advice do you have for girls for a compelling pitch? Hmm, that's a good question. So, I mean, from going, just selling lemonade in a stand to actually going on Shark Tank, that was years of work in itself. I started selling at my stand and then I signed up for local business fairs. And then I started teaching workshops about the bees because I wanted to find a way to help save the bees all year round. And then one of the stores that I was teaching a workshop at really liked my product. So they said, if you can find a way to bottle your product, I'd like to carry it in my store. And so even before we got on Shark Tank, we were in some stores in Austin. I had to know about my business. I had to know like what ingredients were in there, what, the story of how it started and uh, the numbers of where the company was now. So when Shark Tank said, would you, would you be interested in auditioning? 
it was a yes because we were actually growing out of the space where the lemonade was being produced right now. And so some tips that I would have for pitching, because it can be really, really nerve wracking at first, is know who you're pitching to. So if you're pitching to kids, talk about how delicious this is. Talk about how they can bring it to snack at school. If you're pitching to adults, you can talk about how, like for parents, like this is a great snack for your kids. You can pack it for your for your kids for snack, or um, you can, it's even great for all ages. It's a delicious snack for all ages. Just make sure you research who you're pitching to. I had to research who Damon John is and who Lori Grenier is to make sure that I am make, to make sure that I'm re representing my business in the best way to whoever I'm talking to. And I love that because what Girl Scouts is all about. So I'm a former Girl Scout. Um, and I remember being at my cookie booth and and trying to sell those cookies. And, and you have all different types of people that are coming up to your cookie booth and they all are very interested in the cookies. So you have to know your product, right? Yes. Know your product. Um, and like you said, make a compelling pitch to exactly who you're talking to. So we're all, so basically your skill that you're covering today is people skills. So knowing your product and your customer, perfect. Talking to and meeting new people, I think, I think what are some good advice when you're trying to get someone to maybe come over to your come over to your stand and get them to maybe get engaged and, and buy some cookies? Well, you're lemonade, but some Girl Scout cookies. Yes. So I mean, based on what I've experienced, because I remember standing at my booth as well and trying to get people to come over and try my product. What I had to do is I can I like made a list of the most popular, like the, the best things about my product. Honey sweetened lemonade. Would you like to try some prickly pear lemonade? Because most people don't know what that is. Or would you like to try some delicious cold lemonade? So what I would do is I would figure out what are some different things that I can call my product. And then I would kind of tell them to people walking by and I would take note of what people came over to what people said no to and passed by and whichever ones worked the best those are the ones that I would use for the rest of the day so even if you get a no from a customer that doesn't mean that that was a completely useless experience you can use that and say okay maybe this phrase doesn't work let's try another one and that's one thing that I learned to eventually get more customers stopping by my booth every day. And another thing is asking questions and making the experience interactive when people come to your booth. Like, have you ever tried flaxseed lemonade? Have you ever tried this cookie flavor? Or have you even heard of this, this new flavor? Would you like to try some? And getting customers to say yes or no, or maybe makes it kind of more of a two-way dialogue instead of you just trying to pitch a product. So those are some really helpful ones that I learned and definitely saved me because I, I was nervous at first asking people to try my product. Yeah, and I think that's great, especially when you make it about the other person. They are more likely to not just be like, you know, when you're in the mall and they want you to, <laughs> to try something, they're like, here, yes. here. It's like, yes. no, it's all right. Make it, make it about the other person. So it's yes. really nice. And I think what's really great is that you said – in your book, you mentioned it's all about the experience and creating a great experience for the customer. Now, I think looking at Michaela's background, she's a great example of a way that you can maybe brand your cookie booth, Girl Scout. So take note, get a little screenshot, make sure you're like, hey, how can I make my booth stand out and make it special? My mom's over there and she's like, I wonder what her booth looks like. It is so bright and colorful. I'll be <laughs> well, Girl Scouts, you're going to have a cookie theme, <laughs> but... Yeah. So perfect. Maybe you could theme it with um, like your you've got this or the horse theme that we have, or maybe we have um, reach for the stars. Lots of themes going Color on. Themes, catchphrases. I love it. That's so perfect. Um, okay. So what do you think about when you picture someone with great people skills? Because I think um, communication and, and being a, a friendly person, what are some ways that girls can be um, inviting to their booth? Well, I think the first most important one, and I know you hear this so much, so I'm going to put a new twist to it. I always say, be you. Um, and this is pretty important because especially for me, when I was at a, a business fair, I was standing in a booth and then there were other kids also trying to sell right next to me. And so I remember trying to copy how they were trying to sell their product. 
do not try to sell like other people. Try to let your personality shine. If you're nervous talking in front of people, like try recording a video. Or, I mean, we literally have a songwriter and singer. You can make a song. Just whatever whatever your special skills are or whatever you enjoy doing and are confident at, then try to use that skill to your advantage instead of trying to sell like everyone else. So it's okay to have your own twist to selling your product. And then another one about people skills is the main one is kind of trying to stay calm. It, it can be really nerve wracking standing and trying to pitch your product. I know this because I was on Shark Tank and I was told, hey, millions of people are going to watch this. This is like a time for you to represent your company to millionaires and billionaires. You wanna do the best that you can. And that was very high stakes. So I realized that if you're nervous about something, that means that you really care about it. And so it don't be, it's okay to be nervous. I think the biggest thing is take deep breaths because that's probably why you have butterflies in your stomach if you do, is take deep breaths and be confident in yourself and the product that you're selling. And I think just confidence is the most important people skill. I think the other ones come with that. There's so many things to learn when it comes to interacting with people, but that's probably the main tip that I've learned and that I would give. That's perfect. I, yeah, I think ultimately going back to the branding was so cool is that Girl Scouts, like she said, if you love, your, so girls are going to be at their booth. If they're at their booth, they're going to be with the other Girl Scouts in their troop. So what's something fun that all you, all you girls love? Maybe, like she said, maybe you do want to write a cookie song and you can sing your cookie song to the, to the customers. Who knows? That'd be so <laughs> cute. I would, I would buy cookies. I'd be like, oh my gosh, let's buy an extra box because they were so creative. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool okay so what do you think is the most important thing when talking to new potential customers I think the most important thing is making sure that you represent yourself and whoever you're selling cookies on behalf of so the Girl Scouts well and the best way to do that is by staying professional because you want to make sure that you are talking about your cookies in a good way, but you're also staying focused on the task at hand. Uh, my dad always said when I was working at my booth, he always said, work now, play later. So when you're at the booth, you're at the booth, you have to be present with what you're working on then. And so whatever, you, whatever you're working on, whether it's interacting with your other Girl Scouts at the booth or interacting with your customers, you want to make sure that you are doing it in a professional in a way in a way that is shining a bright light on the Girl Scouts and who you are oh my gosh that's so amazing um and your dad has some great advice <laughs> um okay so it is so cool that not only are you one of Time Magazine's top 30 most influential teens <laughs> you. you also became a published author okay I'm gonna I'm gonna totally show this off Hey, YouTuber. And I see it. I know, right? You see, I have some pages marked. Um, <laughs> so can you share one tip from your book, Be Fearless, Dream Like a Kid, with Girl Scouts that are preparing for the cookie program during a fairly challenging time? That's an amazing question because one thing, so Be Fearless is my book about how I started and grew Me and the Bees, but also business tips that you can either use if you want to start your own product or idea, or if you're selling um, pretty much Girl Scouts, however you, however you're selling a product, these tips can be applied. And so one thing that I love is that there are these little business ideas that are sprinkled throughout the book. And they're kind of just little tips. Like it's, if you want to mark something, or if you want to remember this in this chapter, here's the main idea that you should remember. So I've highlighted a couple for you Perfect. and I'm super excited to share this. So okay. the first one is don't underestimate the importance of personal and quick responses through social media and email. It sends the message that each customer and buyer matters to your business. That is so important, especially now that so many things are online and it's easier to get disconnected than if we were in person all the way. Honestly, sending a quick message to friends and family, to potential customers is so important, especially if it's a personalized message. So that's one thing that I found super helpful. Let me get the other ones that I've bookmarked because I'm- And that's so great, Girl Scouts, when you are selling through your digital cookie platforms. Um, if you're like DMing or maybe you're texting or emailing, um, I think that's so important to maybe personalize it. So it's not just like, hey, everyone, maybe say, hey, Uncle, um, Uncle Tim, hey, um, 
Michaela. Yes. <laughs> um, and, and write a, a cute little message, maybe what you've been up to and, and what your goals are for when you're selling your cookies. Yes. Um, some other ones are when you fail, don't punish yourself harshly, but learn what you did wrong and try again. So this goes back to, I mean, this goes back to what, when, what customers react to. Well, do they react well to me saying this or do they react badly? And how can I improve the next time? Your business shouldn't define you. You will define your business. So you are part of the Girl Scouts. And like I said, you want to be make sure that you are representing the Girl Scouts in a well way with really nice characteristics. And then I think my last one is when you ask questions, you're not asking for help necessarily, you can be asking to learn. So asking questions and curiosity is so important in business because it allows you to grow. And even if, like I always say, don't be afraid to ask for help because there's always help at the hive. There's always people who you can ask questions to um, for improving your sales or if you need help or if you're having technical issues, always remember that you have a hive of people to, um, it can be teachers or friends at school, but you have a hive of people to help and who want to teach you as well. Yes, and Michaela's a part of my hive. She helped me make sure I got the Zoom set up correctly. <laughs> <laughs> it's a definite got- team effort. <laughs> got it all fixed. <laughs> That's amazing. So last question. So we love how you use your powers for good. I want to know a little bit more about your Healthy Hive Foundation. Yes, so I started with Me and the Bees. And we started doing a bunch of fun flavors. We did mint and prickly pear and ginger lemonade. And we always, with every single bottle, we sweetened it with honey because that's what honeybees make. And then we donate a portion of the proceeds that we make to organizations that are helping the bees. And so that's called social entrepreneurship when you start a business to do good in the world. That's what you guys are already doing. But I also wanted to find a way to kind of save the bees even more. So in 2016, I started a nonprofit. And so what a nonprofit does is it's not for profit, it's all giving back. And so through that, I'm able to teach about the bees and do workshops. I'm able to go and um, also research about them. So figure out why they're dying and what specific things are most successful in helping save the bees and the butterflies and pollinators. And then I'm able to actively protect them. So doing fun projects like starting beehives, turning regular land from campuses or businesses into bee-friendly land with flowers and pollinator-friendly plants. So that's all part of the Healthy Hive Foundation. And I love, I love being able to do both me and the bees and the Healthy Hive. That's so incredible. And I have some of your lemonade right here. I'm thinking maybe we should take a sip. Let's cheers. Let's cheers. Let's cheers. Cheers, Cheers to a successful cookie season. Yes. To all of your success. Thank you. And where can Girl Scouts pick up some of your Me and the Bees lemonade? I know there's a lot of flavors. Yes. So a lot of people still think that I still sell the lemonade sand and Although that's such a fun part of me and the bees, that's not where we are right now. We're actually in stores, which I'm really excited to say. So currently we are in around 800 stores around the United States. We're not international yet, but we are working on it. So if you do want to try the product, then you can go to our website, which is meandthebees.com. And there's a where to buy page and you can type in your zip code and it'll show up with stores near you. But even if you can't try the product, you can still get the book. You can still try the lip balms, which is a new part. There's me and the bees lip balms. There's recipes to make with the lemonade and there's different activities. You can help save the bees and learn about them. So me and the bees is pretty much the hub for all things bees and me and my business. I love it. And before you go, I just want to read something that I loved in the book. Um, I wrote it down because I didn't want to make sure I could find it. So here we go. <laughs> so you were able to meet former President Barack Obama and for- former First Lady Michelle Obama. I That's incredible. Um, and the quote, you were talking about how you went to the Easter egg roll and how you got the egg with his signature on it. Yes. And how you have it and you it's something that you think of and think of all the things that you've accomplished. So this is just something inspirational Girl Scouts. I wanted to share you with you. So when you dream big, like starting a business from the ground up, your rewards are big too. And only because I had a dream and didn't let go of that dream, I was given those opportunities. So Girl Scouts dream big, 
Set, dream they, like a kid. Dream like a kid. The biggest dreamers, yeah. guys. The biggest dreamers. And we dream of possibilities instead of the obstacles. So if there's a time to get started right now, thank you, Miss Christina, for the quote. But you guys are honestly amazing. Continue dreaming like a kid. I love it. Thank you so, so much, Michaela. This was incredible. And I'm so, so excited. Everyone follow Michaela on social media. Check her out. Check out me and the bees and get some of this delicious lemonade and be fearless. Dream like a kid. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'll see you in a minute, Girl Scouts. Bye. Bye.